Hi, witches. Welcome to the new witches beginner witch series. It's a 13 week series where you're going to learn about the foundations of traditional magic, divination, spell work, and much more. Think of this as a way to build your knowledge base through learning, journaling, practicing, and discussion. We'll get started in just a minute. Thanks for being with us. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so happy. If you were on with us earlier, you might notice we switched places. <laughs> Amy is usually the host, and I'm usually the co-host. And tonight, I'm Kat, and I'm kind of nervous because this is like my first hosting, but I'm so excited to share my knowledge with you guys. And I'm so happy to see so many people that signed up for the Beginner Witch Series. We get a... we. Do I start? I'm starting, even though we'll still have hey, your right. I keep wanting to reach Wait, across oh, and run the, uh, I gotta manage everything now. Uh, <laughs> we, we switch roles, so she's driving the uh, admitting people and watching the chat, and I'm I'm gonna do most of the talking or try to. So you guys bear with me. This is really like my very first time of doing all this. But as I was saying, I am super excited that there's so many people that are interested in this beginner witch series. Um, in case you don't know, I'm Kat, and I've been a witch for almost three years. Um, this is my daughter, Jamie. She's been a witch for 22 years, so I'm going to be your uh, host. She's going to be your co-host, and she's also going to be here to answer questions that maybe I won't have the answer to. So the way that the meeting will be structured is that uh, there will be a lesson that we'll go through. Hopefully I can wrap it up in like 30 minutes. And then and that all is being recorded. Um, we post it to our YouTube channel, Seven Green Sisters channel. Okay, so the structure of the meeting is structure. that there, there will be um, about 30 minutes of, of lesson, if you will, information. Um, which is recorded and then we will stop the recording and then we will open up the, the session to any questions that you may have. And the other thing I was saying is I'm two and a half, three years into my journey. So, but Jamie is here as our, I called her the master witch, although there's really no such thing. I just call her that because she seems to have such a wealth <laughs> of knowledge and I'm always learning things from her. So she'll be here to answer questions that I won't be able to answer or maybe may not know the answer to, or just might not be sure about. You will be able to ask anything you would like uh, when we get to the Q&A session. It doesn't necessarily have to be about uh, the topic tonight. So, okay. That now that we got... Lot. Hold on, take a nice All right. <laughs> All right. Everybody's still with me, right? Okay. All right. Wait, see, I got to do this thing. So All tell right. us why you're doing this, Kat. Like, what's your intent behind this? Okay, so let me give you a little bit of history. Jamie and I started the New Witches Q&A Meetup in November of 2020. And- um, No, 2021, no, 2020. 2020. Oh November 2020, so a little over a year ago. And we held weekly meetings and it was basically just open forum. When we first started, it was just open forum. Like, New Witches, come here, ask any questions you want. So there's a lot of discussion um and no just structure. no structure behind it or anything and about yeah. I don't know around around February Jamie Jamie started putting together actual like lessons yes. and then and naming the meetups and then and then so you know we would do full new map full uh full moon magic new moon magic uh you holidays. know tarot holidays which is holidays yeah. just a wide variety of topics and at that time we were recording on um uh, iPhone, so they were like this big, you know, the images were about this big. Uh, since then, we've we signed up for Zoom and we record these on Zoom, so now we have a full size, a much better um, image uh, video for you guys to watch, recording for you to watch afterward. Um, <clears throat> so we started this a year and a little over a year ago, and you know, it came to the point where we just decided that it was time to take this group in a little bit different direction. We have, um, we get a lot of questions from people in, uh, our, in our topics. And I, in particular, wanted to teach this class because as I mentioned, if you, re if you um, uh, read the description of the book, this class is gonna be loosely based around the Solitary Witch's Green Book. And what I love about this book is that I, I, I found this through an audiobook on Scribe and 
listened to it probably a half a dozen times before I bought the copy for like $10. So if you want to do that and have this as part of your resources, it's a good one, especially for new witches, because it actually takes you step by step. And each week you build on your knowledge from the previous week and add things so that by the time you get through the book and by the time you get through this course, you'll have a good foundation for your path as a new witch. And the great thing with doing it here live is that any questions you have, or we can sort of debunk some stuff that feel like there's only one way to do something, because there's not. There's many ways to do everything. There's never just a one way. So I like always offering that for people to not feel like they're doing it wrong or they're having a problem. You know, we want to be available. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that we want to do here, and, and our YouTube channel is Seven Green Sisters, and we also have a website. We're building a business called Seven Green Sisters. And the whole intent behind that is to help witches on their path. That is our goal, to help educate them, to just help them find the resources that they want, answers to questions. Because, you know, witchcraft, there is not a Bible for witchcraft. Unless you're a Wiccan, there's actually a book for Wiccan because Wiccan is a religion, a recognized religion. So there's a book of Wicca. But for witches who are not following that path, uh, the Wiccan path, which is which requires in most instances initiation, then you're kind of left on your own to figure it out. And that can be a bit overwhelming. So I, my hope, our hope is that our with hope. this class, that we'll go, we'll go week by week, we'll add knowledge, and along the way we're gonna practice. So we're gonna learn, we're gonna journal about what we learn. We're going to practice and we're going to discuss. And that's how you guys over the next 13 weeks are going to build your base of knowledge about witchcraft. Uh, the great, the thing that I love about this path is that I get to choose what I want. The, the components of it, there are a lot of things out there. There's divination, there's, um, give me some other things. Topics. <laughs> There's all kinds of topics under the umbrella of witchcraft. There's yeah. candle magic, there's herb magic, there's different types of witches. There's, tarot. Um, there's tarot, there's oracle cards, palmistry. there's tangible, there's palmistry, astrology, <laughs> numerology, all of these things. So where does a new witch go? Where, you know, where do you start when there's so much information out there? Um, hopefully you also read, tonight we're gonna start with, your book of shadows or your magic journal or your, just your journal, or I found a new term, a book of mirrors, which is, you can imagine a book of mirrors would be reflections, but your notebook, which I hope everybody got, and if you didn't, you'll have an opportunity to pick up one this week because you have journaling prompts to answer to kind of help you fine tune some ideas around witchcraft for yourself. Because a lot of this, you guys, is you, there's questions that you need to answer for yourself that I can't answer for you and Jamie can't answer for you. You have to decide like your code of ethics, like what do you believe is the right thing to do? There's nobody out there that's gonna tell you that it's wrong. Well, <laughs> well, some well, people that's might not, tell you it's wrong. That, that's not really true, but, but what, but who are they? There's not exactly. an authority out there. Yeah. There's not a church. There's not a, there's not a Bible that we all follow. So you're gonna have, you get to make a lot of decisions on this path for yourself. Be uh, <clears throat> go ahead. I don't know how to interrupt you. I'm not it's fine. You okay. just go ahead. So go listen, ahead. the thing we wanted to paste into the chat, Kat has the journal prompts in a Google Doc that'll be shared. And I don't know if you're adding to it every week or if you're, if it's going to be like one per week. I'll just probably do one per week. So, it's, per a, week. it's a resource for you. Um, I'll create a document with information that I will make available to you. Uh, through Google Docs, and right now there's a link in tonight tonight's meetup. And oh yeah, it's in the meetup. I thought we were going to put it in the chat on Zoom. Sorry, that's what I was asking. I think we are. We are. Okay, but I don't know how to do that. You're driving that <laughs> part of it. it. Okay. So we'll go over those. So when you when we get to the part um, about journaling prompts, you guys don't have to worry about writing all that down because I'm actually going to give it to you so that you don't have to worry about scribbling really fast. Okay, so don't worry about that. So. Okay, so we were going to start with all right. So let's talk about let's talk about your book of shadows, or your magic journal, or or just your journal. You get to call this. This is where okay. So first of all, the purpose of this is to record your journey. 
and your experiences and your thoughts around those. So, um, and the cool stuff that happens when you complete things, like you'll see synchronicities everywhere as you start to journal about them. That's what I love. I love writing down the synchronicities that happen. Right. And so, you know, the Book of Shadows, where does that name come from? A lot of people, there's a, there's miss, um, I think, information about a Book of Shadows being like the witches of the old had Books of Shadows where all of their secret rituals and spells were written down in. Well, that's really not true because witches of old didn't even have paper. They didn't know how to read. There was, you know, they didn't know how to write all of that, all, everything that you know, in the Book of Shadows implies that it was needed to be hidden. And really it's, um, it's a place for you to reflect on your personal journey, to write down things that you learn, spells that you do, how you got those spells, um, just all the things. I hope that you will really take the time to journal because journaling is such an important part of this journey because it helps you, um, it helps you in looking back on uh, what you've learned a year from now, imagine you have a journal filled with information that you have practiced over the course of the year, looked up over the course of the year, spells that you've done, things that you've tried, uh, things that you decided, I tried them and I just really didn't, I really wasn't down with that. So I, you don't have to do that, but the journal or the book of shadows or whatever you would like to call it, it's your personal book, um, is a place for you to record all of this. So can I, I want to say one member, we did a, we did something with Grimoire and Book of Shadows. One member said that she was just going to call it her book of infinite knowledge. And I love that because it doesn't give a, a label to it and it doesn't have to connect it to being a witch or witchcraft if that's not your path. If you're just spiritual and you want to know about witchcraft, but you don't want to call yourself a witch yet, that's okay. She called it her book of infinite knowledge. And I love that. So I love that. Yeah, you can call it whatever you want. I love that. So since we're talking about beliefs and witchcraft and things like this, I'm going to talk a little bit. The Book of Shadows actually was um, is attributed to Gerald Gardner, which if you've heard that name, you probably know he's considered to be the father of Wicca. And it first came when it first came to the public's attention, it was called witchcraft. Gardner referred to this as craft of the wise, which I really like because a lot of, um, you know, I mean, it is wise as you're learning, as you're learning new skills, as you're learning how to manipulate energy or uh, your intentions, then, you know, that I, I just like that word um, or phrase craft of the wise. Um, so some of the Wiccan beliefs are that uh, and, I'm, and I'm talking about Wicca, not because we follow that path, because we choose, I choose, Jamie chooses to follow our own path. Um, I don't really know what I call myself. I think a solitary witch. But a lot of the um, practices that are in Wicca, you'll see they transcend over to just witchcraft. So in some of the beliefs, although with Wicca, you have to, you're required to follow those. So if you're in the Wiccan path, if you want to follow that path, cool, nothing wrong with that. But it is a organized religion with rules and a structure and a hierarchy and all kinds of other things. So some of the things that they believe, and you'll, you may recognize this from your own beliefs as a new witch, is that humans have a spirit or a soul that survives the bodily death. Um, <clears throat> a wick is classified as a religious movement, a modern form of paganism by scholars. Um, let's see. Best known, most influential and extensive extensively studied form of paganism. Um, Wiccans believe in the afterlife. Well, actually that varies among Wiccans. Not all of them believe in it. They do believe in reincarnation, which I like to believe in reincarnation. I do. Fun fact, reincarnation was in the Bible up until 630 AD. And then they decided to take it out because that meant that people got another chance to do it again. And then there's no eternal damnation so they're like why would we bother so just fun fact sorry yeah no thank yeah. you because that's great so um many wiccans believe uh that magic is the law of nature and they also believe in the law of threefold return so whatever you do comes back to three i don't necessarily no i don't necessarily subscribe to that but again when you are on this path your own path making your decisions for your path you can decide if that's that's what you want to believe you Hey, 
you, you take it in as a, a standard to live by. It doesn't mean you can't change it later, but it's just how you perceive yourself at that day and time. That's why the journal helps because you can reflect and see like, how much have I changed? Because with research and more knowledge, you can gain a better perspective about what you think is right for you. So um, witchcraft, so the Wiccan ride, read, read. the Wiccan <laughs> read is harm none, do what you will. Um, do, what you will. do what you will, but harm none. Mm -hmm. I like that. That I'll take for my own. I do path. take that. Yep. Yep. Um, witchcraft, though, you know, traditionally meant uh, use of magic to cause harm or mis misfortune. In fact, if you uh, look at Webster's Dictionary today, Webster's Dictionary states that it is, you know, um, I have it written down somewhere. <laughs> it says that it's. Um, for malicious purposes. And that's, well, we know all of us that are here tonight, we know that's not why we're doing it. I don't think, I mean, I, maybe I shouldn't speak for everybody else, but um, <clears throat> so there is this, um, with, the, with the term witchcraft in which even though we're coming into a period of time where it's becoming more acceptable, um, mainstream, mainstream, where you're you're seeing a lot of books. A lot of the books that are being written are being written by Wiccan, but there's a lot of witch things going on in the world right now. And I think there is this move. I feel like there's this move away from organized religion, and that was one of the things that drew me to witchcraft is because I was raised Catholic. So if anybody knows anything about the Catholic religion, you know you have these different rites of passages that you go through with. Uh, baptism and then um, confirmation and other things where you step up in your knowledge of Catholicism and then you adhere to all of these rules. Um, you know, I was in that religion until I was about 17 years old and then I left it and never went back. Over the years, I have tried bap Baptist, uh, Pentecostal, uh, I don't know. No. I was one of those people in the 70s that were going to the revivals when they used to have the revivals at the beach and they they baptized everyone in the ocean. If any of you are, um, were, are have been around long enough to remember that, they would baptize you in the ocean. I probably been baptized, baptized like six times. And I was like, I don't know why, but I just, you know, was with, so they would have these revivals and it was all about, it was the Jesus freaks and all that stuff. So I did all that. I mean, at one point in time, I knew all the books of the Bible, but, you know, my big focus when I was involved in religion or when I followed a religion was always the book of Revelations. I read that thing. I was obsessed with the book of Revelations and it scared the hell out of me, you know, and it made me fearful to live and more than that, fearful to die about what was going to happen to me if I didn't do all of these things that according to religion said I was going to do. So eventually I just was like, I threw up my hands because I'm a sinner and you know, <laughs> I'm going to hell. So fuck it. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I cuss. Um, <laughs> but you know, so I turned away from that because I, and I finally got to the point where I was like, I don't want to, and I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I don't want to think of God, a God, any God as a vindictive God. I want to think of God as love and light. And so that was the other thing that drew me to witchcraft. It's like, there's not all of this. If you don't do this, this is going to happen. You know, there's none of that. So one of the things that you're going to be journaling about this week is what religion you were raised in and what those beliefs were and how those affect what you think about witchcraft today. Because that's really important. You can still practice your religion and practice witchcraft. Okay. Uh, let's see. So in the Wiccan, also in the Wiccan uh, culture, Wiccan is an initiate, initiatory religion, which means initiatory religion, which, <laughs> religion, which means you have to be initiated. So there's an initiation ritual at the first degree, which is your year and a day. You may have heard this where you have to practice for a year and a day, and then, then, then you're initiated into a coven and, you know, uh, and then there is a second degree where there is another ceremony where you have to describe the uses of the of the um, tools. And you're given your craft name and then the third degree, which is the highest degree of Wiccan is participation in what they call the great right, 
And this is either symbolic or actual sexual intercourse with the purpose of drawing energy from the powerful connection between the male and female. So, you know, yeah, I'm not getting down <laughs> with that. So, yeah. But more power to you if that, you know, um, the one, I guess the one thing I would say about Wiccan is there's a lot more structure there. So if you're a person that needs structure, it might be something that you explore. Uh, if you do, you know, if you do get involved with it, just, you know, be careful because not all people are, I mean, I don't know anything about finding a coven. I don't know where you find a reputable coven. I don't know. I just don't know anything about that. So I know things to tell you to look out for. Yeah, that's the best we could probably do. Which is basically the same thing as if you don't want to get kidnapped. Same signs you look for. You know. <laughs> yeah, if you don't want to be involved in a cult. Yeah. I mean, um, I mean, there's, you know, my biggest problem, I think, with it is that you have some high, you've got this hierarchy, hierarchy and it's, even though it's, um, it's more fit, driven by females instead of males, which is the, which is the church, you know, uh, organized religion is patriarchal. But but um, Wiccan is like there's the high priestess, there's there's a high priest too. But it's a lot of female energy going on there, and God. you know, not all Wiccan. I mean, not all covens will accept you. So um, if it's something that you're into, you might explore. You might find some other people, um, or pick up a book about Wicca and start learning that. Uh, we are here to talk about, or we're here to learn about just traditional or solitary witchcraft. So that's what we're going to talk about. Which yeah. relates to, I do what I want on my terms with my own ethics. That's it. And you can pick and choose what you pull from whatever actual religion you might be in, whatever nature-based spiritual stuff that you like. All of that is just your choice. That's why we love it so much because it offers that freedom. Nobody's like over us telling us what to do, how to do it, when to do it. No. Yeah. All right. So your first, your first task this week, and again, don't write this down. Don't feel like you have to scribble really fast while I'm talking because I'm going to post this for you. Or actually, I've already posted it for you. But in your, when you start your book of shadows, did ever, hopefully everyone got a notebook to, uh, this week. I hope so. If not, <laughs> please get one. <laughs> it's going to be an important part of your journey. Um, write an introduction and, you know, that includes your name and date, date and place of birth. You might also include some other um, information like your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising sign, all of which provides insight into your personality. If you don't know, you probably know your sun sign. That's the month you were born or the day you were born. So you're either, I'm a Scorpio, Jamie's Pisces. a Pisces. Um, <clears throat> but you can find if you need, if you're not sure what your moon sign is or what your rising sign is, you can find these by getting a prenatal chart on a couple of good websites for that is our uh, AstroSeek and Cafe Astrology. And these are in the notes that I'm going to give you guys too. So you can find your natal chart. So you might write down that. You might, um, if you're into numerology, you might figure out what your birth path number is, what your karmic debt is. Those are those are little pieces of information that give you insight into yourself, which you know, your book of shadows is about insights and knowledge. So those are good things to have. So that's part of your introduction. And then as also as part of your introduction, you're gonna answer some of these questions and I'll read them to you. But again, please don't write them down. But what I'd like you to do in this introduction part of your journal is reflect on the following and write a short paragraph. Now pick, pick whichever one of these, pick two or three, do them all if you're really ambitious, more power to you. But here's some questions that you can ask yourself and journal about, reflect on and journal about. What is a witch? What does that mean to you? What is magic? And what does magic mean to you? Have you ever practiced magic? If so, where did you find the spell? How, what did you hope to achieve? What was the outcome? And what supplies did you use? Why did you sign up for this meetup? Why are you here? Are you a witch? <laughs> um, if so, what kind of witch are you? We're going to talk about different kinds of witches here in a few minutes. Um, what interests you the most about witchcraft? And what do you want to get out of it? What do you hope to get from witchcraft? Um, how would your family react if you told them that you were a witch? Do you feel safe saying, I'm a witch? Or do you need to keep your practice in private? This is also known as the broom closet. If you need to practice your craft in private, 
because of your circumstances, people that you live with, judgmental. I was going to be nice. <laughs> I mean, it's their family members. You don't need to call their names. Judgmental peoples. Um, it's just less open-minded. Yeah, less you open-minded. Um, if you need to practice in, in, in private, if you need to keep your, your practice private, you can still do that and practice. There's ways to do that. You can, um, you know, keep your altar in a box, keep your journal in something that doesn't look like a book of shadows, just like, like a regular book on your bookshelf. You can print, practice candle magic. You can still do rituals. Um, there's different ways to still herb magic. There's different things that you can still do and not be all out on front street like I am with a pentagram on the, on the front of my house uh, with your witchcraft. So uh, if you're in that situation where you need to keep it private, there's ways to do that. So that's the first section of your book. That's your introduction. And a few questions to just kind of reflect on and pull out of yourself. Like, what do you think these things are? Okay, next topic. <laughs> How am I doing so far? So good. All right, good. You're doing great. Okay. Hopefully, I, I don't go too much over, you guys. I see we're already 30 minutes in. But, um, okay. Uh, finding your path. So <clears throat> uh, this is the this will be the second um, section that you'll write about in your journal. And here we're going to explore our um, uh, spiritual beliefs and answer some of these questions some are all of them what religion if any were you brought up with do you believe there is only one god this is monotheistic or do you believe there are many gods and goddesses that's polytheistic are your spiritual needs fulfilled at this point in your life if not what's missing this is like why did you come here why are you exploring witchcraft so it's good to think about these things and reflect on them and write about them because this is going to help you determine where this path is going to take you. What do you believe happens after you die? Uh, do you believe in past lives? Do you know of any past lives you've lived? And if so, um, do you know of any past, any of your own past lives, if you do believe in that? So that's interesting about finding your path. These are, you know, when you're, when you're looking at your path, you're really looking at what are my, what's my current belief system? We all were, most of us probably grew up with some form of religious education. And it's hard, sometimes hard to separate ourselves from that when we think about going down a path that is not, uh, um, that's, let's see a little out there, uh, pagan, witchcraft. I'm not sure it's how It's just to, different from the norm. Yeah. Yeah. That's not organized. It's sometimes yeah. hard to think think about that and to reconcile that. So exploring what your current beliefs are and what you would like to believe or what you would like to uh, the path you'd like to follow is is has value in it. Okay. So right now, the next thing I would like to talk about is different types of witches. So I'm going to give you some descriptions. And maybe one of these will resonate with you. And these are not the only types of witches that there are, but um, these may lead you to other, uh, more information if you're looking for. If none of these resonates with you, you don't have to call yourself. You don't have to say I'm witch A or B or witch anything, you're just a witch. But let me just give you the descriptions. So traditional witchcraft is comparable to folk magic. The emphasis is on nature. There are no strict rituals or ceremonies with traditional witchcraft. You can practice any religion with traditional witch, witchcraft. Traditional witches don't believe in Wiccan dogma. And with traditional witch, traditional witchcraft can be as simple as sending your intentions out into the universe. Just as easy as that. Um, <clears throat> white, that's, that's like the good vibes thing. It always reminds me of like, just sending energy anywhere is synonymous with what witches do all the time through spells and rituals. So just that, and you don't have to be a witch to do that. You just have to recognize that we're all made of energy and we can manipulate it and send it and hold it. Well, and also if you think about this, this ties, I think, I feel like this ties uh, to the law of attraction where what you think about and what you put out into the universe, you actually draw to you. So if you're fearful, I think, you know, I feel like you draw things that you're afraid of. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had a party and we were getting, we were getting set up 
we were getting set up at Jamie's house for this party for what was it? Christmas. Christmas. It was a Christmas party, right? Yeah, it was an L party. party. And there was clouds in the sky. And I was like, what if it rains? And Jamie's like, don't say that. And the next thing you know, like 30 minutes right later, it starts raining. And she's like, look what you did. And I said, I didn't realize I was that powerful. I mean, I called the rain down by saying, what if it rains? So what you think you manifest. And I think that is what that sending your intentions out into the universe is, is about speaking your intentions. Okay, so that was traditional witchcraft. Just a few points about it. It's not all encompassing. You guys know you could probably get online and look up traditional witchcraft and get a lot more information, but that gives you a brief overview of what that is. Okay, white witchcraft. What the heck is that? White, white witchcraft or white riches, <laughs> witches. <laughs> He's having a real hard time with that W. <laughs> I run, run, run. <laughs> uh, use magic only for good deeds. They believe evil actions come back to the doer. They never curse anyone or use magic to harm. They don't use magic to bend other people's will or change their preferences. Sometimes they call themselves good witches. This is probably to be more acceptable to society. Um, I do want to make a disclaimer statement here really quick, I realize as I start down this path is that I need to tell you something. So whatever you hear tonight or any other time from anyone else about witchcraft, don't take everything that people say at face value. Do your own research. Um, you know, I may give you misinformation because I found wrong information or someone else may. So don't, um, so I encourage you to explore and read that's my disclaimer. Did all I right. get it all in there? Yes. So as a secondary disclaimer, because I was at this, you know, back in the 90s, um, a lot of these terms came about when people started trying to figure out who they could associate with and then write books on it. So these labels that we talk about, they weren't really a thing back in the day. Like you had people who may have done what they called black magic or dark magic, but we'd stopped referencing black or white and just talked about energy instead, like way back when. So even hearing like white witchcraft tonight, it sounds ridiculous to me, but it's a thing that somebody wrote about because it's been prefaced in other ways. Like, so in England, it's totally different when you go and talk to witches there because they use a different set of words to describe things. So things that you hear tonight and the different books that you read, consider where they're at in the world when they write them or what what uh, traditions or people that they run into that they either interview or they've been around that actually uses this type of language and it doesn't resonate with you at all. That's okay. I would never use the term white witchcraft or black witchcraft. I just, I just wouldn't. Like I understand kitchen witch and hedge witch and you know, eclectic witch, traditional witch. I get all of those, but like to separate the energies out, I don't know. And then for black and white, I'm like, yeah, I'm not, not a fan. So. What Kat is doing is using references that somebody wrote about, of course. So as we find these things, this is the part where we're talking about, like, you don't have to accept any information that you read. That's what's so great about being solitary is you get to pick and choose. You're like, I like this and this and this, and you can have that statement back. That's what's great about it, because you don't have to follow this person's writing, our writing, the things that we've done. You get to make up your own mind. Yay, freedom. <laughs> okay, that's my disclaimer. <laughs> okay. So going, going on with the types of witches based on what other people have said. <laughs> based on what's around um, the world. Other people, from yeah. around the world and all kinds of sources. Yeah. So of course you already know, because we have talked about a little bit about Wicca. There are Wiccan witches who follow the Wiccan religion and adhere to the rule of three. They believe, they believe and follow the rules of Wicca and they may belong to a coven. Not all people who practice which Wicca belong to a coven or even they some there are solitary Wiccans. Okay, gray gray witchcraft uses offensive magic when needed. <laughs> that um, gray witches agree that all energy has a positive and negative side, and nothing can be complete without both. They perform curses and hexes when there is a good reason. So when you think about writing your own code of ethics for your witch, and you think about the path that you're going to follow, when you hear you know, some of these, some of these descriptions that I've given you, you know, you can pick something out of here, out of each one of these and say, that's what I'm going to adopt as my path. 
So don't, you know, just because under white witchcraft, it says they only, they only do good deeds. Well, I hope you only do good deeds ever in your witchcraft. And even though you don't call yourself a white witch. Yeah, because that's definitely, I only do things for the good and, it, you know, to help other people. Usually people ask me to do spells with them or for them. That's it. I like to believe that that's, I like to believe that that's what this path is, is about doing good in the world. Living it is, purpose. yeah, it is, it definitely is for me. And, and I think, I know I haven't met any of you, but if we were all in a group together, if we were in a like real meetup, I hope that that, you know, we would have the sense of vibration that we're all here to do good things in, in the world. Cause there's enough bad shit out there already. We don't need any more of that. So, speaking okay. Of bad shit. <laughs> speaking of bad shit, black witchcraft. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as you can imagine, black witch witches or black witchcraft uses spells and curses with no altruistic goals other than personal profit. They only use uh, only use magic to harm others. So these are probably the witches of fairy tales and uh, the media or movies and things like that. Yeah. Because we all have a good part and a bad part of us. Everybody has a little bit of good, a little bit of bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's probably not one person as wretched as they may be uh, <laughs> that only practices black witchcraft. Because that would be exhausting, honestly. Okay, so now Jamie mentioned, mentioned kitchen witch and head witch, hedge witch. So here's a few other. Um, a kitchen witch works with food and edible ingredients. They share a love for home and family. A hedge witch lives on the border between our realm and the spirit plane. They communicate with the other side, work with spirit animals. And in many cultures, these the hedge witches are represented by shamans and healers of the village. Uh, green witches are nature witches. They work with the elements, the forest, the sea, and animals. They're well-versed in herbal rem remedies and have a deep love for the outdoors and all living things. So if you took from each of these things and just picked one, like, I want to be the witch that, you know, is well-versed in herbal remedy remedies and loves the outdoors, because I love the outdoors and all living creatures. Preachers. <laughs> Preachers. <laughs> I'll get you speech lessons after this. It's okay. <laughs> so those are just a few of the categories of witches and witchcraft, and it is not an all-encompassing list. But the next task on your in your journal this week is to write about what kind of witch am I? Can I? I'm going to interject on the labeling again. I feel like I said it, but just to make it clear. The labels came out specifically so that people could start writing books about just one small area of witchcraft and practices. And that's why you see the array, not because when you are a hedge witch, you're only a hedge witch. You're not. You're usually a collection of many pieces of different types of witches. But in order to write books and sell them better, <laughs> they created themes. And so these are just themes that witches know and adhere to. So when you're in magical circles and you say, I'm a green witch, people, people understand that as, okay, I know things she's probably into or knows. If you're a divination witch, which we didn't mention that one, but that's somebody who like only does palmistry, tarot, tea leaf readings, pendulum. So if you just do that, you'd be like, oh, you know, I just work with divination. You don't have to call yourself a divination witch. You just say, I only work with divinations. So that's why they started separating out all these labels. I think they're cute and I love the pictures they make. and I love the books that they do because it is concise information, but it's confusing to people just starting out because then you think you have to pick a type of witch you are. You don't. You don't. You you're don't. just a witch <laughs> and, and you're a witch because you want to be a witch. There's no other requirement. Here, right? here. Here to that. <laughs> okay. So uh, the next journaling prompt for your book for your uh, book of shadows this week is what kind of witch are you? Um, <laughs> and again, choose a couple yeah, labels. <laughs> yeah, choose choose a couple. Did any one of the descriptions that I gave you resonate with you? You might do some more research. Yeah, find out more. About you it. might do some more research on that. If none of those resonate with you, uh, write about the type of magic that you would like to learn to practice and learn more about. Remember, this is a journey, and where you are today may look very different from where you'll be a year from now. I hope that that is the case. <clears throat> Through practicing and journaling, that will be the case for you. So the other thing you can do is if you're just not sure what, what path you might wanna follow or what knowledge you might wanna follow, you might do some research on your ancestry. What part of the world did your ancestors come from and what kind of witchcraft was 
have practiced in that part of the world, you know, record any interesting facts that you get. I'm of the, I'm from, my ancestors are from the British Isles and specifically like my, the third in my list on ancestry is Lancashire, which is in England. And there was a whole bunch of witchy stuff that went on there. I was kind of really surprised when I read about that. I was like, wow, a lot of witch stuff going on in there. So I feel like, you know, there must be some relatives in the past for me anyway, that are witches and probably you too. Could be Russian, could be whatever. Uh, but do some research on your ancestry and see what you can learn about the, your ancestors and what kind of witchcraft might have been practiced in that part of the world. Oh, I have a quick note. Yep. All right. If anybody's ever been attracted to Egyptian culture, okay, that was a form of witchcraft. That was not the name of it, but that was deity and magic and spells and rituals. So even just loving like the Egyptian culture and everything to do with that because I've always loved been fascinated with like oh, that and Native American those are two things that we don't say oh that's witchcraft you don't really think that that's not what it said but that that is in the same realm of these are nature-based multi-god you know practices that people had where they knew energy and they watched it transfer from one thing to another where they explored it with each other just just offering that out there. So if you've ever loved Native American culture or the Egyptian culture, those are so, I, I feel like it's wrong to label them as witchcraft, but you're in the realm of the same things that they believed, practiced, and did, sort of in line with the same stuff we were And they today. had deities that they yeah. worshiped. In, in right, those, they were all um, polytheistic. Yeah, so they had <clears> multiple <throat> gods, goddesses. Uh, in, in the Egyptian world, of course, there was a reign where it was more goddesses than God. Woo-hoo! But... In Native American culture, it was very equal. So love both. So this is super, super ancient, way more ancient than like, you know, in England and like Lancaster. What'd you say? Lancashire. Lancashire. So you can go way back, way further. Okay, that's it. All right. So I hope you're not feeling overwhelmed yet. I know you have three big topics to write about this week, but you also have a whole week to do this. So I encourage you to find some time to, to journal a little bit about these topics. The very last thing um, for your journaling prompts this week is going to be your witch's code of ethic. And I already ethics and I already I already touched on this a little bit. And there are, you know, there there are really no rules to being a witch um, because we what well, we get to Only decide the rules, uh, the rules that you set mm -hmm. are the rules that are the rules yeah. because we don't we're not following any particular text or bible or book of whatever you're not following any one you know everything following. that you choose you get to choose for yourself so you're following yourself but it's a good so so there's some you know among um <clears throat> among witches there's you know different witches have different beliefs about what they what their personal code of ethics are for me I believe in do no harm, first and foremost. Um, I believe that uh, uh, about to not force my beliefs onto other people to respect their beliefs and also to, you know, expect that people will respect my beliefs. Um, I think I already said, don't believe everything you hear or read, research and decide what's best for you. So one of the witch's code of ethics is about free will. And this has to do with, so, so here's, here's what you need. To, well, what I recommend that you reflect on is um, <clears throat> this free will is a much debated topic um, of disagreement among some witches. Some believe that you should never interfere with another person's free will, such as in love spells. Others believe that uh, others see nothing wrong with revenge magic. So getting back at someone who harmed you or someone that you love. You have to decide as a witch, if you're going to start doing spells and manipulating magic or manipulate, manipulating energy and trying to affect change, um, where do you draw the line? Is it okay to uh, make someone, try to make someone fall in love with you? Um, is it okay if somebody hurts your family member to hex them? Um, I should tell you a story. I'd like to share a little story with you about uh, my other daughter, Jolene. 
she was dating a guy for a little while who was really religious. I think he was Ukrainian. So I, and I don't know what kind of religion they practiced, but whatever it was, it's he, a Christianity thing. It's a, yeah, That's he was it. really, uh, he was really in deep and they had a, why she was attracted to this guy. I think it was more like because of the philosophical conversations that they could have with the differences between his beliefs and her beliefs. But anyway, the relationship goes south, not surprising because you two people with completely different points of view about some really uh, spirituality, deep stuff, deep spirit. Yeah, that's, you know, we're talking about life and death. You know, we're talking about life after death or after death, what happens to you and among other things, among how you live your life on this earth right now. But anyway, sometime after, I don't know, six months after uh, they broke up, I think it was. He they showed, weren't together long, and like. They, Six weeks. Yeah, not, not together. Not long. very long at all. No. But evidently, as a witch, she really made an impression on him <laughs> because he came back to her house like six months later and asked her to take the hex or the spell off of him that she had cast on the him. Hex, yeah. The hex, because his life was falling apart and he thought that she did something to him. She put a spell on him to wreck his life. Never mind that the guy was a drug addict and a total loser. You know, he didn't see that. What he, what he, you know, he related his problems back to something that she did. And he went so far as to go to the police and file a police report that she put, that she put a spell on him. No, it wasn't just a spell. He said he had a demon trapped inside of him <laughs> because my sister was a witch. What? And he needs a psychiatrist <laughs> on many levels, but... And he went to the police and they had to come to her house and be like, what is going on? So, so yeah. not that she cast a spell, but if you ever do cast a spell and somebody knows about it, you know, there could be blowback from that. So just please be careful about uh, what you do and decide where you're going to draw the line. Are you going to do spells for other people? Um, you know, what types of spells? We discussed love spells, but what about spells for health or healing or legal matters? Uh, some people, especially people who are really religious, could get really upset if they found out that you, you use magic on them, even if it was for a good intention to make them better, um, you know, to, in, to improve their health or some legal situation. Um, you know, as hard as it may be, sometimes witches have to respect others' rights to refuse help, even if it seems hard. And I want to just make a key point. You can also refuse to do a spell for somebody when you're not comfortable. I have been asked to do spells for people and I didn't believe their <laughs> one second about a certain somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want their spell to come true. So I'm not gonna do a spell that I already wouldn't want for them to get anyways. So no matter that at the time I felt like we were friends, no. I already didn't like where that was going. She wanted to manipulate something that was really bad and not like I can't say not legal. It was legal, but regardless, she was, you know, no, I had to tell her no. And if people get really crazy and they're like, you know, save my kid's life, he has cancer stuff. Like you get things like that. If you're out there with some people where they could be a hundred percent in a faith, any religion, and all of a sudden they think that you have a special power to save a kid's life because you practice witchcraft, which is really nuts because that's a really hard thing to also say like I don't actually have that power I'm not I'm not God I'm not Jesus I can't heal people on the spot like I, if I could turn water into wine I would I don't have that power I work on myself most of the time when people are afraid of witches of like what we'll do to them we're like dude we're so busy working on ourselves we're not worried about you and what you got going on so it's uh understand that you could be faced with that dilemma as well don't be surprised by it it's just when people get really desperate they're willing to go to any length and believe in anything to a certain degree to get what they want. Um, so you can also say no to other people. Yeah, and CYA, yeah. I mean, oh, CYA, yeah. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, spells and, you know, spells and divination are, are never a substitute for medical or legal advice. So um, just, uh, as you as you go down this path and you learn more and you become more experienced, you know this is where you're you're going to figure out what your code of ethics are and where you're going to draw the line when people ask you for things. And maybe you won't know exactly because you won't know the situations that you'll be faced with. You may not know that today, but you'll uh, like Jamie had a sense about this person and whatever she asked for. 
it's like that's not a good thing I'm not I can't I can't be a part of that yeah no matter how much she wanted to pay me it didn't matter I was like no that that's where my ethics came in to where I knew that that was just a no yeah so speaking of casting spells for others are you practicing magic for yourself do you want to help others your community or the whole planet which is a really good thing you know planet. <laughs> you know, there's ways that you can do that and send good vibrations out to the universe. When I'm driving and somebody's driving crazy, you know, I say instead of cussing them out, which sometimes what I my first inclination is to do that, but instead I try to say, I hope you get where you're going safely. So sending that energy out into the world. Um, you know, I I'm one of these people who ha who likes to know what's going on in the world. And sometimes the news, well, no, a lot of times the news can be really depressing. Um, you know, the fire in Colorado and that, that we just had that a thousand people lost their homes. And like Jane, when I was telling Jamie about this, she's like, well, what can you do as a witch that's positive in that? And I thought about it. I was like, well, you know, I could light a candle and say a prayer. I mean, uh, that's something that's positive that I could redirect that energy where I feel bad for all of those people that those things happen into something positive. All right. And the last thing about your code of ethics, did you want to add something? I well, just that like people may think it's weird to hear a witch say prayer, but a spell is a prayer. Meditation is a type of prayer. It's when you're concentrating your energy on affecting change. So that is an okay word to use in case anybody is used to saying the word prayer. Sending prayers out, like absolutely saying God bless is not against witches. So the, the normal language that you would use that is an elevated emotion for goodness, you can still use that language and there's nothing wrong with it. You can change it if you want to, but I wanted to address like the language that we use that intersects all religions and feelings is the good emotions that you're trying to put out into the world and whatever words you use to make that happen. Don't, don't feel like they're associated to just one thing. Okay. All right. Okay. Lastly, profiting from witchcraft. So um, if you are, uh, if you want to be a tarot reader or you want to do spells for people and take money, please check with your state and local <laughs> laws to make sure that this is not an illegal practice. You don't want to get into trouble. Educate yourself about that so that you're not in a situation where you cause yourself a problem. Um, you might consider a barter system in exchange of services. Like, for instance, if you have a hairdresser that wants a tarot reading, maybe you can sh you can trade a haircut for a tarot reading or some other exchange of services. But know if you're going to charge for your services as a witch, what the laws are in your area, whether you need a license, so that you keep yourself out of uh, any legal trouble. And obviously don't be involved in, in scams or, or fraudulent activity, which if you are doing something that you should have had a license for could be considered fraud. So just be careful about that and know where your lines are, know where you're drawing your lines, what your code of ethics are for this. So that's the last journal prompt for this week uh, is which is code of, code of ethics. And this is a good time to explore your personal beliefs and develop your own personal code of ethics. There's no, as I said already, there's no book of witchcraft or sacred texts for modern witches to follow. Therefore, it's up to you to decide what's right and what's wrong as you embark on this journey. I have some prompts to help you kind of figure that out. But if you come up with other things, please write them in your journal. Yeah. Some of those might be, do you believe in karma? And if so, what does that mean for you? Do you believe it's okay to use magic to change people's will? Do you believe it's acceptable to practice black magic? i.e. magic for the express purpose of harming others. In what situation would black magic be acceptable? Do you believe, what are your beliefs about love spells? And do you believe it's okay to charge for magic spells, divina divination, or other magical practices? Is this something you could see yourself learning to do? All right. When Kat brought up the thing about like, check your local state to see if it's allowed. I mean, I haven't, so uh, I get readings here, but I don't know if those people have licenses. I mean, that's something that I had to really ask myself, like, oh man, I don't really make enough because I don't do it like publicly and all the time, but I have to figure out if I make enough to report it as an income. And if I do, I have to make sure that I'm licensed and qualified as like a holistic, I don't even know. 
So I thought that was really good from me. Thank you. Um, I guess I'll be asking my financial advisor his <laughs> advice on that and see what he says. Well, you just don't know. I mean, yeah, in, I some, wouldn't have in some that. areas of the country, they can be pretty backwards about, well, what I consider to be pretty backwards. They can be, you know, where there's a really strong, in the Bible Belt, as an example, you might run into problems in the Bible Belt when we're talking about witchcraft and doing spells and things like that. Just know what, just, just please be aware so that you uh, don't inadvertently get yourself into a jam with, with the law or something else. Well, so that, and I would say when you start reading, read for people you mostly know first. That way you can't get caught up in something crazy like that. I mean, that's how I keep it. I have to have conversations with people before I'll read for them. Like, I don't just accept people to hit me up online and get a reading. That's not how that works. I'm like, I need to talk to them. I need to know a little bit about them because I want to make sure that it's safe and I'm not going to get involved with somebody online who's, you know, I don't, I don't know <laughs> any of the number of words that I could choose, but yeah, so that's, that's a good practice, but you should, I would tell you guys, if you want to do anything, practice, practice, practice. So whether it's spells, practice, journal, practice, journal, practice, just, journal, practice yeah, journal. Yeah. Right. When you learn and then practice some more and there's no wrong, there's no like doing wrong. Okay, so that is week one of the Beginner Witch series. I know there's a lot of writing to do this week, but um, after this, there won't be as much writing, although I will encourage you each week and probably give you prompts to write about. Um, the link for this week's prompts is in uh, the meetup, is in tonight's meetup, so you can get that now if you like. And we'll, we're going to go ahead and close the meeting and do our little sign up and then stop recording and then open it for questions. If, I know we're already an hour in. So if you guys have to go, I understand. Thank you so much for being here for anyone who has to leave. I really appreciate you. She doesn't, um, know, she doesn't know yet. <laughs> we have we have now 103 subscribers on the YouTube channel, which means we oh get our Oh my gosh, name. we get our real name. Oh my so gosh, you guys, just, thank you so much. I have no idea what our next goal is, but just getting to 100 is like so awesome. Yes. Oh, so the, the Google name. Doc, okay, whoever said, please make the Google Doc printable. It is printable. If you hit Control P, it'll bring up your printer options. Because it's Google Doc. Yeah, because it's Google Doc. So that's how you get that to print. And if you just, if you really uh, struggle with it, go, I think you should be able to uh, highlight it all. Or I mean, yeah, Control A to select everything, Control C to copy it and put it over in your email. It's your meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you everyone who joined us tonight for listening. And I hope you found a lot of value in this. Please journal, please use your magic journal to journal or your book of shadows to journal and reach out to us uh, through Meetup if you have any questions about anything that we talked about next, this week. And I hope to see you back next week for week two of the Beginner Witch series. Bye witches. Bye witches.